this is Target Station 2's experimental hall and the big blue bunker in the centre is where the target lives, the neutron target. And then this target station, it's tiny, it's about this big, it's like the size of a packet of biscuits. So um, this tiny, tiny object receives high energy proton beam, 48 kilowatts of power dumped into this thing, um, liberates all its neutrons and we have to cool it with water as well, stop it melting. Well, this is our neutron spallation source. It's the target for our second target station on ISIS. So um, actually quite privileged to see this. You wouldn't normally be able to see this once it's in service. It's installed, never to be seen again, apart from in the remote handling cell. So we've actually got a, a very special instrument here made from heavy metal. So the, the main core is made of tungsten, and then it's been clad in tantalum. Both these materials are suitable for us to get uh, neutrons from. So when it's in a horizontal position, that would be how we would normally have it installed. You can see how heavy it is by <laughs> wincing a little bit while I'm doing this. But um, so here's, here's it in, in situation now. We would have a manifold in here which would control the cooling water. And then from this direction, we would have a proton beam striking the front. Uh, now the water c comes along the top and over the front face and then back down there in two directions. That's extremely important for this to keep all that uh, energy cool, to keep the material cool so we don't get any, any problems uh, w with the operation there. Meanwhile, in the middle, after the beam's been hitting this, around about this area here, the core temperature is going to get up to about 800 degrees centigrade. So you can imagine there's a lot of water goes over the surface to keep that at around about 50 degrees centigrade, take all that heat away during operation. So this is housed inside what we call a beryllium reflector, which is keeping as many neutrons around the area that, that we can, because they can make it all directions. But we only want them to come out in a certain direction on this plane, where they're going to pass through some moderators. Now they kind of slow the neutrons down to an energy that we can use and direct them to a suite of instruments that the scientists are going to use for analysing things. As soon as it starts hitting here, because this is a suitable source of, of neutrons, this material, we will start getting them. But mainly, it's around about 40 to 50 millimetres back from there, most of the energy is going to be dumped. It's basically, we're throwing kind of uh, lots, lots of energy at it, but it can only, as it hits a dense material, it's Going to, going to tail off getting all the way through, so most of it gets dumped at the front. The main core is tungsten and the cladding on the outside is tantalum. Ideally the scientists would have liked us to make it out of tungsten because that would give the, the, the most neutrons. Tantalum is a little bit less, maybe only about 10% less, but obviously they always want the most. Uh, unfortunately we, we found uh, there's evidence that if we just use tungsten in a water-cooled environment, that with radiation the water would wear some of the tungsten away, so we get deposits of radioactive tungsten in the water system, which we don't want. However, if we clad it in tantalum, uh, tantalum is very inert and doesn't dissolve in even many strong acids, so it's much more suitable for keeping everything under control. Very quickly, we're going to build it up into a proper target module with a manifold and all the um, thermocouples fitted on there. Once it's in operation, it's going to be seeing beam for quite a long time now. It's going to be actually producing the neutrons that scientists are going to use for their experiments. So that's why it's such a key piece of equipment. So it's going to be doing that for a period of two to three years. And so we'll be monitoring it all the time to make sure that we're, uh, we're keeping it to the right temperature and all the parameters are kept in place so it's going to have a good long service life. And then what? Then unfortunately it has to be retired and it's going to be a radioactive, radioactive piece of equipment which means it needs to go into careful storage.